your sleep? Yes, I do. How do you feel about it now that we're on our way? Oh, you're right there. Certain? I am now. I suppose I was just keeping you in San Francisco, hoping against hope that one day the doctors would come up with some miraculous cure. Oh, she'll love your ranch. She'll be happy there. I've got to face it, Dad. That's all we can do for her now. You'll have to wait here a while. You better park right over there. Those are your instructions. What's going on? You got yourself a front seat to something you're not going to forget so quick. See that hill? You'll see it light up like you never saw light before. Any minute now, they're going to test an atomic bomb. Dad, let's turn back. Wouldn't get very far. Ought to go off any minute now. But what about Vivian? She'll be terrified. It'll be just like fireworks for her. She doesn't know what it means. We'll be the ones who'll be frightened. Another surprise for you. A pony. Grandpa, would you let me ride him? Well, sure, he's yours. Can you ride? No, Grandpa, but I can try. Well, you go on, then. No, I still can't believe it. Every time she smiles at me, I think, well, it's just impossible. For days after the doctor told me the diagnosis, I was certain he'd call back to say he'd made a mistake, but... Touch him gently with your heels. How long before she'll have to stay in bed? He couldn't say exactly. But in a few months, she'll be too weak to get up. Mr. Vernon? Yes? My name is Ashley. Hello. I came down to see you last week, but they told me you were in San Francisco. That's right. What can I do for you, Mr. Ashley? I wonder if you'd be interested in selling your ranch. I'm afraid you came at the wrong time. This place is giving a deal of pleasure to a little girl, and at this moment, I wouldn't dream of giving it up. Well, it isn't a matter of giving immediate possession. We have options on the land from here all the way down to the river. But we would like a hold on your place, in case of possible expansion later on. An expansion for what? Well, I thought you knew. The whole town's talking of it. Well, I just got in an hour ago. Oh, I see. Well, I work for the Atomic Energy Commission. They're going to build a plant here. Grandpa, am I doing all right? Just fine. This little girl I was talking about. Hello there. Take them around again. All right, Grandpa. Well, since you've been away and this is all new to you, naturally, you'll need some time to think it over. Maybe it'd be better if I call back again in a day or so. I'm afraid the answer would still be the same. I'll call anyway. Goodbye. 
The atomic bomb. There's not enough unhappiness in the world without that. And now they want to bring it here. I'm sorry, Alice. I just don't want to be reminded of things like that. Maybe I'll go into town and see what the other fellows have to think about it. Well, I suppose I should bring Vivian in for a rest. But I haven't the heart to stop her when she's having so much fun. Let her enjoy herself while she can. In three months, this place will be a boom town. Sure, there'll be problems. But there'll be advantages for every one of us. How much is your place worth right now? About 4000 Well, in six months, I'll be able to get you 12 for it. Maybe 15 If he wants to sell. I won't be going to sell. It's my home, Harry. It's where I was born and raised. It's where my folks settled when they come out here in covered wagons. And they looked all over before they picked this as the best spot. Well, maybe it won't help you so much, but things haven't been too good here for two or three years. Plenty of people in town that could use a little more money. Harry can tell you about that, can't you, Harry? I'm afraid I can't. You don't run a bank without knowing the problems people have. All of us have. Money-wise, I mean. Money is what the plant's going to bring to this town. Of course, I'm not saying that money means happiness. But it's a lot easier when you're not pinching and skimping and worrying year after year. So it's just a question of money. Oh, there's more to it than that. Now, you fellas got me elected mayor, and I know what this town needs and how much it needs. A new school building, for one thing. And, doctor, how far is it to the nearest hospital? 26 miles. And a decent water system wouldn't hurt. Looks like we got along without them so far. But is that any reason why our children should have to? That's why I'm glad the plant is coming here. It'll mean the best schools and hospitals and things like that. Sure, I'll hate to see the old town change just like anybody else, but I'm darn sure it'll be worth it. Seems to me you're all ducking the real point. Now, what's this plant going to make? Fish and more material, they call it. Eh, no matter what they call it, it all adds up to one thing. The atomic bomb. And that's why this whole idea makes me sick. There won't be any danger around the plant. Everything will be carefully controlled. That's not the point. I was at Hiroshima, Doc. Maybe eight or nine days after the bomb was dropped. I saw what was left. So they're going to make the atomic bomb here. Well, I'm selling my place and leaving town. I don't want any part of it. I can understand how he feels. After that kind of an experience, naturally, he's afraid of the whole idea of the bomb. Let us be honest. We're all afraid. We're all terrified, and so are people all over the world. But the fact of the matter is, the bomb is here. Now that it's been invented, we just can't stick our heads in the sand and pretend that it doesn't exist. And say what you like about it. Having the bomb is pretty good insurance against an attack by an aggressor. John, you've been very quiet. How do you feel about this? Well, I was listening. I only heard the news about an hour ago, and I don't like to make up my mind in a hurry. Have you made it up now? Yes, I think I have. I agree with a lot you fellows have been talking about. But the bomb's been invented, and there's nothing we can do about that. The point is that we want it here. Harry says the plant will bring money into the town. Well, that's fine, of course. And we can all use a little more money. I know I can. Farrell says it'll give us new schools and a hospital and so on. But where will all this come from? From the atomic bomb. And the atomic bomb, no matter how thin you slice it, is simply a machine for killing people. Yeah. My folks came here about the same time yours did, Tim. That's right. Maybe today it isn't as big a town as they dreamed it would be. It probably isn't as rich a town. All we did was grow our crops and raise our cattle. But at least we never tried to make any money out of other people's unhappiness. No. Some of you are worrying that the town will change. I'm worrying about the people who live in this town. What sort of people we will be after we grow rich on the atomic bomb. With our schools and hospitals that we know one day will have to be paid for with other people's lives. Yeah. That's the change I'm worrying about. I don't think it's worth it. No, I feel just fine. Really, I do. 
No headaches? No dizzy spells? You must tell me the truth, you know. If I do, you'll keep me in bed. You won't let me go out and play with the pony. I'm all right. But my doll, she isn't feeling so well. She gets tired quicker than she used to. Mm, I see. What else does your doll tell you? Well, she's got a pain back here. And it won't go away, even when I rub it for her. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do for her. You take her out in the morning to play with a pony and everything. But afternoons, I want you both to come back to bed. How's that? Okay. Now, both of you get to sleep. Okay. God bless you, darling. Good night, Mommy. Well, I can't tell you anything you don't know already. Just following its predicted course. Will there be much pain? Not yet. Not for some month. But the end's inevitable. Unless... Unless what? I suppose they talked to you about the possibilities of an operation. They said the chance of success would be one in a thousand. We thought it over very carefully. It was a tough decision to make. With a gamble like that, what right did we have to cut off what little chance she has left? Someday the chances will be better. Someday we'll have learned enough. It'll be too late for her. Things like this in the world, and they have to invent the atomic bomb. I suppose that's why I sounded off so yesterday. Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, I'm glad you did. I intended coming over here tonight, even if you hadn't called me about Vivian. You got me thinking. It was good for me. You know, up to now, I kept thinking that everything science did was good. My training, I suppose. Now I'm not so sure. Other fellows are thinking, too. You know, John, I think if you were to take a vote right now, the town would be against having the plant come here at all. Are you certain? I talked to a lot of people today. Then what are we going to do about it? Do about it? Well, sure. If you think a thing is wrong, then you've got to do something about it. Well, what can we do about it? I don't know. But that's what we're going to find out. Well, now, we've heard most everybody's point of view, and it seems to me mostly against the bomb, so if somebody will just move a motion deploring it, we'll take a vote on it and go home. What good would that do? Well, it ease our consciences a little, I guess, and make us feel better about the whole business. Well, that's not the point of this meeting. The point is to keep the plant from coming here. Well, that's a kind of a tough proposition, isn't it? You just can't argue with something like the Atomic Energy Commission. Why not? The Atomic Energy Commission is part of the government. The government is elected to work for it. Seems to me it's our duty as citizens to speak out when they do something we disagree with. You think that would get you anywhere? I don't know. But I'm still going to argue. Maybe it will at that. We're not telling them how to run their business. We're not saying don't make any more bombs. All we're saying is don't bring your plant here. There must be hundreds of places where they could build. If they knew that this whole town was against it, you think they'd insist on putting it here? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move a resolution. Go ahead, Harry. I want to be the one to move it because at first I was all for the plant. But what I've heard has made me change my mind. I move that it is the unanimous wish of this council that the Atomic Energy Commission abandon all plans for building a plant in this township. And we call on our representative in Congress to use every endeavor to see that this is done. Yeah. I'm afraid I can't help you. They might listen to me on nuclear physics, but this is an administrative matter. That's not the way I want you to help. I'm not going to take this up with the AEC just yet, even if your constituents tell you to. I don't think a congressman's job is to do just what he's told. His job is to do what he thinks is right. I don't think this is right. And if my friends back home had known the whole picture, I don't believe they'd have drawn up this resolution. That's why I need your help. How? I'm flying down there tonight on the 9 o'clock plane. Can you come with me? Well, you know I can't. I've got classes all day tomorrow. You'll I'll be on that plane. 
Because you believe in this as much as I do. You talked with any of the other fellows, Congressman? No, I came to you first because I gather you had most to do with the resolution. They also told me that you were a very stubborn man. Which only means, I suppose, that when you've finally made up your mind, you stick to it. Naturally. But you'll agree that to make up your mind fairly, you have to know all the facts. See, I don't think you know all the facts. I used to feel the same way you do about atomic energy until colors straightened me out. To me, it was just a bomb, and so I hated it. Well, Miss Colors, isn't that about what it is? It's mostly what you read about, I grant you that. It's mostly what it's been used for so far. That's the tragedy of nuclear energy. But it had to begin at Hiroshima. No wonder the world is confused. Many of us are afraid. Mr. Vernon, think about primitive man thousands of years ago before he learned the use of fire. All fire meant to him was forest fire that might burn him to death, fire from volcanoes. He was afraid of it. He hated it. Naturally, he never thought that fire would become man's servant instead of his master. And you think atomic energy will be? Oh, yes. In spite of Hiroshima, if we control it rightly, as fire has to be controlled rightly, it'll be one of the greatest blessings we've ever received. I'm not asking you to take his word for it, as you obviously have no intention of doing. None whatsoever. Neither did I at first. The colors convinced me by showing me a little film they made in Washington. Now, before I act on your resolution, I'd like him to have the chance of doing the same for you fellas here. Is that fair? Yes. That's fair enough, Congressman. So far in this film, you've seen demonstrations of atomic energy at work as a force for good in industry and agriculture. Now we go on to a more dramatic use of this God-given force. This girl is suffering from one of mankind's most dread diseases, cancer. She has cancer of the thyroid gland. A few years ago, this would have meant her case was hopeless. Now she has a chance. That glass looks like it has plain water in it, but actually it contains hope. Hope in the form of a radioactive iodine solution. Now, most people know that iodine is used in treating thyroid, but let's explain where this radioactive business comes in. Here we see the young lady on the examination table. Suppose, instead of the radioactive solution, she'd swallowed a tiny wristwatch. Then, if you could listen closely enough, you could hear a ticking in her throat. In the same way, a little bit of atomic energy in the solution she drank is now sending out signals from her throat. These signals are being picked up by the apparatus suspended over her neck, and so provide a new and tremendously valuable guide to the doctor in his efforts to help the girl. Now take a look at this instrument. It doesn't seem very interesting, but believe it or not, you're seeing a bunch of atoms drawing their own picture. Every tick of a radioactive atom causes a pin in the instrument to jiggle as it passes over the chart. Let's see it in action. This gentleman may have cancer of the thyroid gland. He's drinking the same kind of iodine solution the young lady drank. And just as it did in her case, the iodine concentrates in the cancer tissue. Then the atoms go to work and draw their own picture. And so the doctor has a record of the exact location of the cancer which he could obtain in no other way. Another use of atomic energy as a tracer is in brain surgery. The work is being done in the use of radiophosphorus for the detection and exact location of brain tumors. And the accuracy of the information that this new method supplies is leading to revolutionary results. Already several cases of brain tumor, hitherto considered hopeless, have been successfully operated on with the aid of this great new tool of medicine. Medical research is just one of the many uses of atomic energy as a benefit. Before we review the other beneficial uses, let's look at the many places in America where for many years thousands have worked in the field of atomic energy. Well, you've given us plenty to think about. Of course, it's mainly in the future. Don't you want to contribute to the future? Now you're needling me about the resolution. Of course I am. That's what I'm here for. Good night, Congressman. Good night. Good night, Tim. When's the next meeting of the council? Tomorrow. I think I'll stop over. Maybe you fellows will consider it again. 
maybe. Radio phosphorus is a tracer. Tell me more about that. Well, there's a surgeon in Boston using it with some kind of a Geiger counter to locate the exact spot of the brain tumor. Hmm. Has it been successful? Well, of course, it's all very new, but he's already had results in cases that seem to be hopeless. Mr. Vernon, do you have some personal interest in this? Yes, my grandchild. The little girl you saw this afternoon. She's dying of a brain tumor. Do you have this surgeon's address? Sure. Let's go to your house. We'll get him on the phone. Yes? Dr. Cooper? This is Congressman Maynard. Forgive me for calling you at this hour, but Professor Cullors gave me your name, and this is pretty important. A constituent of mine, Dr. Peterson, would like to talk to you. Yes? Here he is. Dr. Cooper? I'm calling about a young child, a patient of mine. Yes. Well, uh, the symptoms seem to indicate a uh, growth in the lower region of the cerebellum. He's on the phone now. Dr. Peterson's going to suggest we fly to Boston for examination tomorrow. Of course, you realize it's only a chance. I know, but this morning there was no chance at all. There goes her plane. Let's hope he finds it possible to operate. Don't mind saying I've done a deal of praying that he will. Well, let's get going. If you fellas agree, Maynard and Cullors are going to sit in with us and listen. Well, sure. It warms my heart to see a congressman listening for a change. Is everybody here? How about Doc Peterson? He went to Boston with him. Oh, John, I thought you were going back with her. I was, but I changed my mind. I'm going to take the other plane tonight. You know, I had some sort of share in passing this resolution. I didn't think it was right for me to walk out on it now. Well, let's start by hearing what John has to say. No, Mike, this is a personal thing with me. Because just now I can only think of my own granddaughter. It isn't fair for me to try and influence you other fellas. You've got to make up your own minds on the whole picture. But I've got this to say. Because of atomic research, there's a chance now for my granddaughter. What's even more important is a better chance for children like her in the future. That is, if we don't put obstacles in the way of atomic research. That's why, for my own part, I've got to withdraw my vote on the resolution. I understand how you feel, Mr. Vernon. But as you say, we have to take the whole picture. Now, is it worth it? As far as I'm concerned, that isn't the point. I voted against atomic energy because I thought it was the work of the devil. Now I know I was wrong. You see, God made the atom. I see that now. He made it just as surely as he made the hills and the sea and, and life itself. And God never made anything that was of itself evil. I can't argue that, Tim. But what about Hiroshima? Oh, you can't blame the energy that God put in the atom for that. No, we've got ourselves to blame. Mankind for fighting wars and, and, and uh, using what God has given us for, uh, for destruction. Yes, but it happened. And maybe it'll happen again and much worse next time. So is it worth it? Men being what they are, wouldn't it really have been better if this thing hadn't been invented? May I say something? Go ahead. I can only answer Mr. Benson by telling him why Colors and I came down here yesterday. You know, I don't leave Washington every time a city council passes a resolution. But this is something about which every town in America has to think clearly. And let's hope every town in the world. Of course you're right, Mr. Benson. The energy in the atom is the most destructive force the world has ever seen. But as Colors has shown us, it can also be one of the greatest blessings God has ever given us. Which is it to be? Because on that depends the future of mankind. Sure, we sometimes wish it hadn't been invented. We're afraid of the responsibility because the results will be so terrible if we misuse it. But it has been invented, and we have to take the responsibility. We can't just shut our eyes to it. 
You, Mr. Benson. You saw the destructive side of Hiroshima. And now all of you, with the hope that's been given to John Vernon, you've seen a little of the good it can bring and its promise for the future of the world. That's how high the stakes are, for good or for evil. And that's the challenge you've accepted, to do your part in making atomic energy not a curse, but a blessing to mankind. Of course, this is just one town, and there are only a few of us in this room. But all over America, and all over the whole world, too, people must sooner or later face the same challenge. And I pray that they, too, make the right choice. Oh, we, we've muddled and we've made mistakes. But this time, God has entrusted us with a physical force bigger than we've ever had before. One that can destroy us or can lead us on to new horizons. And with this choice before us, God willing, we shall not fail. <laughs>